uh, what is democratic socialism, right? Uh, they, they keep bringing that idea up. Um, and they, and, and they talk about the idea of social democracy. Those are, those are some uh, important questions to ask, especially when we're talking, uh, when we're talking Bernie Sanders. We are. We are talking Bernie Sanders. We're doing a little Bernie chat. Um, so, uh, to start with, uh, if we look at socialism as an economic principle, um, this was a, a progressive, uh, progressive independent reporter that, uh, that kind of broke this down. So, and I like what he had to say. I, I felt like it was a pretty... Uh, uh, you know, um, pragmatic view of what socialism is, is that as, especially as an economic model. Um, so basically, the government controls, uh, you know, certain programs. A lot of the programs is covered, uh, controlled by the government, um, and the government, through these social programs, uh, has control over the economy. Um, that's that's what it would be, just pure socialism. Um, and then the people are, we're all government employees at that point, right? So we all become like federal government employees regardless of what we do because we're part of this system that controls uh, most of the programs and, and, the, uh, and the economic system as well. And the idea behind it is that it's all about social welfare for the nation's citizens. That means that the idea is that we're, uh, it's a government that will take care of its people so uh, that socialism is an economic principle. Like it, you know, um, you kind of you kind of thrust that power into a governing body, and that governing body will uh, will listen to the people and do uh, do what's best for them. Um, kind of kind of like what your parents are when you're when you're super little. Like like your par- like you want all of the ice cream all the time, uh, and your parents are like, hey, no, don't do that. That's a bad idea. Uh, and then you try to do it anyway, and you throw like a little bit of a temper tantrum, and they're like, "We're not gonna, we're not just gonna give it to your temper tantrum." Uh, and then eventually you like uh, yell yourself to sleep. That's kind of like what socialism, in a, in a pure in a pure form, uh, and uh, if we're looking at it as an economic principle, and and a lot of things is like. When you do talk about socialism too, is you, we're, we're talking about it in the sense of like it is the antithesis of capitalism, which is all driven by profit, which is all driven driven by uh, the need to make money, the need to have the most amount of it. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're it, that it, it fundamentally is the opposite of that. It doesn't it, it doesn't have. Uh, it doesn't care that much about profit, right? It it cares more about um, the, the social welfare, the, the the way people are being taken care of. So then we have um, a social democracy, uh, and uh, social democracy is the, the the way this guy defines it is it's a political, social, and philosoph. Uh, Ugh, I'm losing my fucking mouth at this point, too. Uh, political, social, and economic philosophy that promotes social justice. Okay, that's a big point of it. Um, it's within the framework of capitalism. And the government doesn't control everything, right? The government kind of controls some things. It controls a couple different things, but it doesn't control everything. That's that's where the social democracy comes in. But, but the idea is that it's going to you know, try to do the right thing. Um, so, so now, the major differences here between capitalism, uh, socialism, and social democracy is really who controls the means of production and the and the productive assets, right? In capitalism, it's it, it's a money bags thing. It's 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 all about money. So it's it's all about who is going to profit from this and how the profits are shared. Well. The CEO is always gonna, you know, it's like, hey, I own this company, but, but he's got 30 employees that are, you know, down making the thing with their hands. They're putting the, the nuts and bolts together, and uh, what he's doing is basically like, you know, I'm I'm using he just as a 
pejorative. This is a thing that that's what it could be. Whoever you know, the some of the most of the war profiteering companies, the CEOs are all women. Uh, so they, I'll say they. Uh, so they um, will sign off, you know, uh, on contracts and uh, and then take home most of the money, and, and and less and less of it is given to people down the down the chain, and that's that's what we're living in now. Um, in socialism and a social democracy, though, um, the people that control the productive assets, the they they have a, a little bit more control of things. They have a little bit more um, stake in everything, and uh, they they get a little bit more of the of, of the profits as well. Uh, there there is a little bit more of a equality in that sort of system. So it's not. 400, 500 times the difference between a CEO and an employee in a, in a socialist system or, or, or social democracy, which is how it should be, right? Because if you're, if you're part of that company and that company says we care about you and we want to, you know, like in, in, in turn for the work that you're doing, we will, we will provide you with a, you know, a good wage based on the, 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 the production of, of the work that you put in, um, and that's part of the reason why you need uh, unions in, in these sort of things because it, uh, it it brings the worker into the uh, into the into the negotiating table. So. You know, a lot of it too, like in socialism, like I said, people are the ones that kind of end up being in control of some of these things here. Oh, this is a bad one. No oh, shit. I was trying to avoid that so badly, and I did not do a very good job. Uh, the road was just so fucked up. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, people, people control... You know, they're they're the ones that own the labor. They're the ones that own that production asset. Uh, at the end of the day, and um, so what that means is that there is a collective mindset. Uh, there's also a collective method of ownership, right? So if you talk to somebody like Dr. Richard Wolff, um, it's uh, it's the notion of like worker co-ops, right? Like where the the employee has a say it democratizes the workplace so you know you can't just have a where a, a, a factory that's like hey uh we're gonna move all this shit to mexico at the end of the month and uh and you guys will be out of a job and we're gonna make uh we're gonna make about uh, 85 percent more money up at the top uh okay bye right like it's not this closed door fucking eyes wide shut you know, smoke and mirrors, corporate bullshit anymore. It democratizes the workplace. It makes it makes you invested in the workplace. That's that's the that's the so that's the way socialism operates. There's a collective mentality behind it. You know, we're all part of this thing. We all do our part to make this thing work. So we should all be treated fairly, and we should all have a say in how things go. That's the way that it works. So, so in that sense, socialism and social democracy ha- it kind of give that power back um, to the worker. Uh, it, it makes it makes the middle class a lot stronger, uh, and uh, and and you know, it, 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 specifically in a social democracy, you do have the notion of hierarchy and stuff. Um, so uh, that is still existent in a in a social democracy, but. This notion of, of, of collective ownership of this worker co-op is so uh, strange and foreign, um, you know, to uh, to Americans because America is kind of bred on being the individual, right? It's based on individual growth is how it's kind of bred. Uh, it, there, there is a notion of like self-importance that you are the most important thing and you have to win America over every other American and that makes you the truest of all true Americans or, or, or uh, you know, some. But 
it's all about the individual. It's all about the self. It's all about the ego. That's how the, the culture um, of this country is kind of put together. So, you know, in that mindset, collectivism becomes evil because it's not feeding into that ego uh, that your country is kind of built on. And so, you, so it's easy for people to look at socialism or your social democracy or any of these ideas uh, that, that, you know, have collectivism at the core of it and say that they, yeah, this sounds interesting, this sounds cool, because it, in a hyper-individualistic society that's, that's built around self-importance and the ego, taking care of your neighbor as well as you is not something that is comprehensible um, because we're working off of a competitive mindset, not a collaborative mindset. And that competitive mindset says, well, if my neighbor is going to get taken care of, uh, well, that means that's probably less for me. When, you know, in terms of, in terms of things like wealth and stuff, that's, that's a lot of it is, that is made up. Like money is pretty made up. Uh, you know, the value associated to money is pretty made up. And so if somebody wants to give you $1,000 a month, if, if a government decides that it wants to give its citizens $1,000 a month, that means, yeah, all adult citizens are going to get uh, $1,000 a month, and that's awesome, and that's great. It doesn't, but the mindset that we have is, well, if my neighbor gets $1,000 a month, then eventually I'm not. Uh, well, so I need to, I need to get his thousand. I, I got to figure out a way to get his thousand. Um, so it's that part. The collective mindset is just, it's just hard to comprehend in that terms. Uh, you know, so it's evil. It's evil is how it's, it's thrown out to the people. So, uh, you know, a big thing that I think I've addressed in terms of this is uh, democratic socialism and, uh, and social democracy don't act on profit alone, right? Profit and uh, money are, are, are kind of uh, means to equality and promoting social justice. Um, they're tools. The primary focus is how can we make a more uh, equal and just society? How can we make sure uh, that you and your neighbor are taken care of simultaneously. What can we do? Uh, and and w what is the methodology? What is the policy? What is the uh, thing that we can do to, to make sure? You know, your, your neighbor, uh, you know, lost their job. And they're kind of having a hard time. Uh, and maybe, you know, the government's like, hey, we're, we're, kind of, we're struggling a little bit. Uh, as well, and I don't know if we can really send out, you know, a monthly check or what have you. But then the neighborhood gets together uh, and says, "Hey, let's uh, let's do a fundraiser or something," you know. And and because there aren't any sort of these like crazy fucking rules, uh, you can do that. You can create a neighborhood fundraiser and you raise a, uh, you know fifteen hundred dollars for your neighbor, and they're able to pay rent and uh, put food on their table for a month, and that takes less stress off there. Uh, off their plate and they can concentrate on looking for a new job and uh, uh, all, all that sort of good stuff and go to an interview and be present and take care of their mental health um, and then they do and by the end of the month they go hey thank you guys so much if you know and uh, and then when it comes down to your turn they do the same thing and 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 the main focus of that was not well, I have to keep my money. Well, fuck that guy. It, it was my neighbor struggling and I got to help him out. You know, what happened didn't seem fair. It didn't seem right. Uh, I'm going to help them out. I'm going to get the whole neighborhood involved because right now the government doesn't really seem like it's sending out a lot of checks or it's going to take it's going to take about three weeks to process. And boy, that's a long time. You know, it's a long time to not know you're going to make some money. Um, I'm gonna help them out. 
I'm gonna see how many of my neighbors I can get together. You know, you know. I know. I know. There's a kid that he's got. Uh, he plays in a band. Uh, it's a good band. Maybe I'll get them to do a, a concert, uh, and we'll raise money. That's social democracy, and in that term, it's just it's just a bunch of citizens that are coming together, uh, you know. And if we have that on a government level, things would be a bajillion times easier. It would be so much easier because the neighborhood will help and can help, um, but. That's also the job of a governing body. It, it, it would be a governing body that is built on care, a compassion and understanding um, and not like profit and greed and competition. Uh, and, and like I said, profit is a, is a tool. It's a, money is a tool that can, you know, that can help uh, equalize things. Um, so in, in that, in, in, you know, in, in a system like this, it it would be funding social programs that uplift the collective society, uh, and it gives us the freedom to be individuals. It, It gives us the freedom of individual pursuits, right? Because if, if we don't have to worry about, uh, our health, if constantly, you know, what happens if I'm sick? Holy shit, if I get sick, I'm, I'm, I'm out, out of pocket, you know, $300. And, ah, shit, that's rent. I gotta, uh, I'm not gonna be able to afford rent. If I don't have a place, my health is gonna go even. All of these things are not, how are they helping us become a better society when we're worried about that stuff all the time? It, the answer is it doesn't. It fucking doesn't. So, in, in a social democracy or democratic socialism system you don't have to worry about that because the health care is already taken care of if you get sick you go to the doctor and then you come out you know you pick up your prescriptions and go home make some soup get some sleep and you don't have to worry about you know being in debt you can just do it and then the rest of your time is spent pursuing what you want to pursue right you want to you want to take bass lessons you want to uh, you want to learn how to play the cajon. Awesome. Well, you can fucking do that. You know, you you want to you want to uh, figure out how to stop the common cold. Awesome. Well, you can do that because you're not worried about all these other things. The current profit profit driven system that we have. Well, it doesn't do this. We're, I mean, the, the, we're, we're in a system that is more concerned about the money than it is about, uh, about the people or, or our welfare or, or our health or any of that sort of stuff. Uh, and, and it's a debt-based system. We have medical debt. We have student debt. We have car debt. We have bank debt. We have house debt. We have military debt. I mean, it's a full debt. There's no freedom in this. You can't pursue things. You can't use money as a tool to to pursue your individualism as a collective society, to, to close the gaps of injustice, when that tool is being used to create all of these problems. So one of the other things that uh, uh, a bunch of these articles that address democratic socialism and social democracy bring up is a value-added tax, right? Because a lot of the European countries have a value-added tax, and that's—I um, don't—I don't know, uh, you know, the—I don't know a whole lot about the value-added tax. There have been a few people in the states that have talked about it. Uh, I have to do a lot more research on it, but from uh, the basic understanding I have of it, uh, it's basically a tax that uh, everybody has to pay. For all of the goods and services that uh, that, that that get made, um, so you know, it, it includes us and it includes rich people and corporations. And if it's like ten percent or fifteen percent or what have you, well, fifteen percent of you know ten thousand dollars is 
not as large or as helpful as 15% of $1 billion. So, I think, uh, I think Bernie's policies and his politics and his ideologies are uh, somewhere in the middle of democratic socialism and social democracy. You know, I think that's kind of where they are. Um, so, in that term, it is, I mean, his, his campaign, the, the reason why, I mean, I gravitated towards it was because he was the only person talking about um, using the economy as a tool to close the gaps of injustice on many different issues, from medical debt to class warfare. We can do that by, by creating an economic platform that is more concerned about closing the gaps of these injustices, of these economic injustices, right? And I think that's the way he talks about it is somewhere in between democratic socialism and social democracy. And, you know, I think we're going to get hung up on the, on the semantics of it uh, and we'll have this debate constantly over and over again. Um, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, it doesn't matter what you call it. What's important is the ideas that are, that are being talked about um, and the ideas that are going to get implemented. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Uh, if, you, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please give it a, a share, share it around with some friends, with some enemies, whoever you think would, uh, would enjoy content like this. Uh, content like this is not often shown to a lot of people because of the subject matter. So uh, it is completely dependent on you guys to, uh, to share this around and, and spread the word. Uh, and uh, make sure that you're, you're, you subscribe and like uh, and do all that fun stuff. Uh, and uh, if you enjoyed the content that I, uh, that I talked about in this video, there is a good chance that you will also enjoy my live stand-up comedy show. And I'm going to be uh, on tour. I'm touring uh, all around the country with, uh, with my socially conscious stand-up comedy show. Uh, I'm coming to Denton, Texas, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh, I'm opening for my good friend Lee Camp in Austin, Texas, and Dallas, Texas as part of his book release tour. Uh, I'm going to be in Houston, Texas, New Orleans, Louisiana, Biloxi, Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, and a bunch of other dates. Uh, if you want to see my entire tour schedule to see if I'm coming to a city near you, you can go to my website, which is ramanoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Check out my whole tour schedule. You can uh, sign up for my email list there. You can check out past videos, old stand-up videos, old uh, road reflections, forkful of noodles, taboo table talk. Just by, it's your one-stop shop for all things Chris Mohan people. Uh, so uh, I hope you guys check that out, and uh, and we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. We'll see you on the road. Thanks, guys.